Okay then, before I start today's Retro Arch and Beetle PSX setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content on my channel, just Jamie. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, which is virtually every day, and it helps my channel out too. So just over a year ago, I released a full setup guide for Swan Station through Retro Arch. Now it's highly debated in the Retro Arch community if Swan station is better than vice versa so what we're going to do today is show you how to set up beetle psx and you can judge for yourself i'm also going to be showing you how to set up your games into chd so chd takes away your bin and q files and it also saves you space as well so first of all what we're going to do is just convert games we can head over to this website and the link's going to be in my description and just download chdman.zip so before we go into RetroArch itself, let's convert these files to make things a bit more simpler. So in my Capcom folder just here, I've got a PSX game or PS1 game. As we can see, this is in .bin and .q file extension. If I open up chdman.zip, what I'm going to do here is just highlight chdman.exe and the next file down, which is qgdi iso to chd bat. What I'm going to do is copy both of these into that Capcom folder. And to convert these to CHD, we're just going to double left click on dot bat. And that's going to then start compressing and creating the CHD game. And while this is compressing, what we're going to do is set up RetroArch. So I'm going to open up my portable copy of RetroArch. And we're going to go to the system folder. And this is where our BIOS files or Beetle PSX need to be. So in my BIOS folder, I've got three of the BIOS files for Beetle PSX, and here they are. So we've got scph5500.bin, and two more just ending with 01 and 02. So I'm going to drag and drop all three of these into my RetroArch system folder. And next thing we're going to do is just open up RetroArch itself, and we're going to download the core for Beetle PSX. Okay, so once we're inside RetroWatch, we need to go to main menu and we're just going to go to online update or press A on that. I'm using the Xbox controller and we're going to press A on core downloader. Now, if you're new to RetroArch, just remember that cores are essentially little emulators that work with RetroArch. Everything here is alphabetical order, and if you're using a different platform for RetroArch, you won't necessarily see what I see just here. So here we go, Sony PlayStation, Beetle PSX. If I press A to download this one, and that core has now been installed, we've got a hashtag next to it too. So I'm going to press B, and B again, and come out. Back to main menu, I'm going to go down to configuration file and press A. Save current configuration, press A. And if I press B to come out and then drop down to quit and I'm going to press A. Okay, so now we're back out onto the desktop. My Capcom game should now be converted into CHD. Once it's converted, the terminal or console will disappear. So if we go into Capcom... We can see just here that we've now got Capcom versus SNK Pro in .chd. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything but the .chd file. Delete. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to go into my Colin McRae Rally folder. And I'm going to do the same process with this one. So chdman.exe and qgdi iso to chd.bat. Just copy both of those into your game folder. And again, it's just a simple case of double left clicking on the .bat file here. Okay, so that's now been converted. And again, what we can do is just delete all the files in the game folder, but just keep the .chd and delete. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder to put my PS1 games in. So right click, new folder, and I'm going to just call this PS1. And I'm going to put my Colin McRae game and Capcom vs SNK into the PS1 folder. I'm using RetroWatch Portable as we know. And what I'm going to do is just create a new folder inside this RetroWatch folder. New folder. And I'm going to just call this one ROMs. And I'm going to store my folders inside of this one. But just PS1 for this setup guide. Next thing I need to do then is actually open up RetroWatch again. 
Okay, so we're going to import the games into RetroArch this time. So we're going to go down to Import Content. And we're going to go down to Manual Scan. Press A. Content Directory. This is in my C drive. And RetroArch folder is on my desktop. So I'm going to just go down to Users for this. And I'm going to go down to my System folder, which is Jamie. And here's my desktop. And we're now going to find RetroArch. It's going to be in my ROMs folder, which I've just created. And I'm going to scan this directory. I'm then going to press up on my D-pad and start scan by pressing A. And if I press B to come out and we scroll down, we're going to find my ROMs folder here. And here's my two games for PS1. So we're going to open up Capcom versus SNK first. Now we've already downloaded the Beetle PSX core, so press A. And I'm going to go down to Set Core Association for this. So if you're using Swan Station, you'll get this really annoying thing pop up every time we open up a game. It will ask you which core to use. So if you want to set this to open up with Beetle PSX each time, just go to Set Core Association. And I'm going to obviously select just Beetle PSX because this is the only core I've got for PlayStation 3 RetroArch. If I press A, and what I'm going to do next is just go up to... And here we go. We're now in using CHD. And as we can see, that's running perfectly. Now, the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to make some enhancements to video. So for this, I'm going to just open up my Colin McRae Rally game. So Colin McRae Rally. And again, I'm going to just set the core association to run direct from Beetle PSX and go up to run. Okay, so once you booted up your game, we can access the RetroArch Quick menu very easily. In my case, I'm using my Xbox button. You can access this by pressing F1 on your keyboard. From here, what we can do is just come out by pressing B, and then just go down to Settings. From Settings, we're going to go to Video, and once we're inside the video, we're going to go to Scaling. Now, from Scaling, we can go to Aspect Ratio for starters, and this is going to be on Core Provided, which is going to give us 4x3 aspect ratio. If we put this on to full, and I'm also going to add bilinear filtering for this, which is going to add a slight blur. Go back into the game, quick menu, resume. And by pressing your space bar, we can actually fast forward these games like this. Okay, so back in the quick menu, as we can see, Colin McRae Rally has seen better days. It's very pixelated. It don't look that great anymore. So let's actually take a look at clean this up. From quick menu, we're going to go down to core options. From core options, down to video. And internal GPU resolution. If we go into this by pressing A, we can go up to 16 times. Now, you're going to need a chunky computer to do this. A very good CPU in some cases. And a good GPU as well. So be modest with these settings. You could try 16 times or 8 times. If you find your game lags, then obviously drop it down. So for this, I'm going to just go to 4 times. And if I go back into the game now, quit menu, resume. And as you can see, in my case, because i got background processes running right now, it's very laggy. So just in case I go into core options, video, and I'm going to put this to two times. Go back into the game.
Now, if we put this back to core provided aspect ratio, or just put it to four by three, so settings, video, scaling, aspect ratio, I'm gonna put back to core provided. We can actually apply something called overlays. Now we do need to download this through RetroArch Quick Menu. What we need to do is just go back to main menu, online updater, and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find update overlays. And whilst we're here, I'm also going to update slang shaders. So what overlays is going to do, providing you're using four by three aspect ratio or core provided aspect ratio, we can actually get rid of the black bars on here. Very easily done. All we need to do to apply this is just go to quick menu, on screen overlay, and I'm going to press A to display overlay. Overlay preset, I'm going to go down to borders, PSX animated border, and select by pressing A, PSX animated border.cfg. And we also got overlay opacity here. So this is pretty much transparency. If we leave this to 0 0.70, it's gonna show the overlay, but it's gonna be slightly transparent. If we put this right up to the top to 1.00, it's gonna look a lot clearer. So quick menu, resume. And we also just downloaded something else just now. If we go back to quick menu, shaders, I'm going to enable video shaders by pressing A. I'm going to go down to load preset, shader slang by pressing A. And just here we got lots of different shaders to use. So I'm going to apply one of these. I'm going to go down to one of my favorites and this is film. I'm going to apply technicolor dot slang P, press A. Now, if I like the shader I'm about to use, I need to save it. So, in other words, if I open up this game again later on in the day, this shader will be pre-applied, so I don't need to do all this over again. So, I'm going to go to Save Preset. Save Core Preset by pressing A. And then I'm going to go back into the game, Quick Menu, Resume. So some very quirky stuff just there, and I just like that Technicolor one, I think it looks pretty cool. Almost like a Cuphead aesthetic about that one. And I've got more shaders here to apply to this, just by simply going to Quick Menu. Back down to Shaders, Load Preset, Shader Slang. I'm going to go for Bezel this time, and we got Mega Bezel too. If I go to Presets, I can actually make my PS1 games look like it's got a glass CRT effect. If I choose STD glass, and just be patient, when you're applying mega bezels, you will find that your computer might seem that it's frozen, but this is just applying. If you do plan on using mega bezels, we also need to ensure that your video driver is set to Vulkan. Okay, so we need to set the video driver to Vulkan. So to do this, we're going to go back down to settings from main menu. We're going to go to video, output, and under video, we're going to set this to Vulkan. Now, if you don't have Vulkan, the next option you've got is GL Core. So if we now go back into the game, As you can see, Colin McRae now has this fancy mega bezel around it, but it is known that if we put this to full screen, so take away the overlays, it's going to give us the best effect. And you can, of course, do this through quick menu. So we're just going to take away the overlay. On screen overlay, press A to turn it off. And we're also going to change the video, which is under settings, to the aspect ratio of full. So if I go to full and back into the game,
And that's it for today's Retro Watch and Beetle PSX setup guide. Like I said in the video, there's plenty of shaders to use and overlays as long as you download them using Retro Watch. And converting your .bin and .q files into CHD is going to save you a ton of space and also get rid of all those annoying .bins and .q files. So anyways, if you like today's setup guide, make sure to check out my other Retro Watch setup guides too. Also hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like the video today so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content also join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time stay retro